Chapter two. Wait, you're from Staten Island? When I tell people I'm from Staten Island, they're usually confused. Most people have an impression of what someone from Staten Island is like based on characters from Jersey Shore, Mob Wives, or this cartoon Italian man on pizza boxes. In reality, Jersey Shore makes up only a very small percentage of Staten Island's population, around 40%. The rest are grounded, hardworking, normal speaking humans who almost never stand outside their house shaking a rolling pin and yelling, I'm gonna kill you. Yes, Staten Island is the most Italian county in all the United States, beating out even Meatball, Indiana. But the beauty of Staten Island is that anyone who lives there long enough, regardless of ethnicity, just becomes Italian. Now we have Russian Italians, Korean Italians, Egyptian Italians, and Sri Lankan Italians. Oddly, Staten Island has the largest population of Sri Lankans outside of Sri Lanka. You'll see a red-haired, freckled Irishman named Danny O'Doyle. Then he opens his mouth, and it sounds like Marissa Tomei and my cousin Vinny. If you go by accent alone, even members of the Wu-Tang Clan sound like they could be in Goodfellas. I did too, believe it or not. When I finally learned to speak, I swear to God, I sounded like Carmela Soprano. There are videos of me at age eight where I'm trying to sell my bike to whoever's filming me, and it's like an ad for a Mazda dealership on Route 9 in Jersey. Yeah, you know, you gotta check this thing out because it's got more wheels and knows what to do with it. The chroma of this thing's insane, bro. And talk about a seat, this is genuine snake skin, straight off the snake's back. So come on, let's get this deal done. I got a sauce on. Eventually, I trained myself not to speak that way because, well, I just didn't want people to single me out. I wanted to fit in other places, not just where I grew up. That's why I now sound like an Ohio weatherman. Not neutral, friendly, and almost fully recovered after escaping that cult. People don't know much about my hometown. When you Google Staten Island, the first questions that pop up are, is Staten Island a real island? Is Staten Island dangerous? And weirdly, was Karima Abdul-Jabbar ever married? Answer, yes, to Habiba Abdul-Jabbar from 1971 to 1978. Why is this related to Staten Island? I will never know. Although Staten Island is technically part of New New York City, it's physically and spiritually closer to New Jersey. It was a Dutch island before the British took it over, and the Dutch word for river is kill, which makes a lot of places on Staten Island sound even more violent than they already are. Arthur Kill, Fresh Kills, the Kill Van Cole. When you're dumping a body in a river, calling the river a kill seems like, well, overkill. And sure, Staten Island has a bad reputation and is often looked down upon by other boroughs in the city. But I did some historical research on my beloved hometown and discovered that its reputation used to be even worse. The Lenape tribe that lived there hundreds of years ago called it Eguos, or the Bad Woods. That's right, Staten Island was the butt of even Native American jokes. By the way, Never a good sign when Native Americans willingly leave a place. But it gets worse. During the American Revolution, Staten Island was solidly supportive of the British crown, and George Washington calls Staten Islanders our most inveterate enemies. Wow, when George Washington calls you a piece of trash, that hurts. The island was even used by the British as a staging area for attacks on the rest of New York. And this tradition is alive today as Staten Island voted almost 70% for Donald Trump. A clear fuck you to the rest of the city. And no wonder Trump left Staten Island. When our local baseball team won the Little League World Series, they defeated, who else? Mexico. Even our patron saint and beloved explorer Giovanni de Verrazano, after whom the Verrazano Bridge was misspelled, only anchored in Staten Island for one night. Then his friends were like, is this seriously where you hang out? And he yelled, anchors up, let's get this puppy to Manhattan. My family was not like that punk Verrazano. 
We have been living continuously on Staten Island since at least 1890. Half of my mother's Irish ancestors emigrated to New York during the potato famine of the 1840s. Historical proof that it's hard to give up carbs. They moved from the West Village in Manhattan to Brooklyn and then to Staten Island, apparently in search of worse and worse real estate. The other half came directly from County Court to Staten Island in the 1890s, settling on the North Shore for the next hundred years. Once we got to Staten Island, we never wanted to leave. That's why my parents moved directly next door to my grandparents, like a real life everybody loves Raymond. And on the same block, my uncle, my cousin, my other cousin, and my other uncle. When a house comes up for sale on our street, or get a call telling me to buy it or details for a relative's funeral. My mom always said that she loved Staten Island because it still felt like a small town. You would go to the supermarket and see a friend. You would go to church and see your enemies. And thanks to the mafia, you would go to the park and see the dead body of your friend's dad. You know, small town stuff. And I really did know everybody's name. Not only because it was a close knit community, but also because the people I grew up with had fantastic names. Salvatore Samieri, Lenny Leone, Cristo Volpe, Michael Labantuntuono, and my second grade girlfriend, Cristina Martini. Her father, Spiros Martini, incidentally, ran a haunted catering hall. I loved growing up on Staten Island because it felt like kids doing regular kid stuff. We played a lot of sports and wandered around unsupervised and with the exception of that Cropsy serial killer in several neighborhoods with the worst crime rates in all of New York City, it felt safe. Plus, you would see things that could only happen on Staten Island. Like my neighbor who had a Virgin Mary statue on his lawn, but the statue started to lean fo forward, so to secure it, he tied a rope around her neck. So anyone driving by would think, Oh, this man is hanging the Virgin Mary. I guess he hates religion? when in fact he loved religion so much that he refused to let the mother of God touch his astroturf lawn. Of course, Staten Island has changed a lot since my relatives settled here. It used to be almost entirely farmland. And when I was growing up in the 90s, there were still horses in a stable down the street. Weirdly, that stable is now a graveyard. Maybe for those horses? More than anything, it's just a lot more crowded than it used to be. In the past couple of decades, the population of Staten Island has more than doubled, but the number of roads stayed basically the same. As a result, traffic is the number one topic of conversation at any Staten Island gathering. I visit my family and the first 15 minutes will be, how'd you get here? How is the traffic? Did you take the expressway or Clove Road? Are you going home the same way? Why not? Is there going to be traffic? What do you know that I don't know, you son of a bitch? Then 20 minutes after the party starts, someone gets up and says, I have to leave now to avoid traffic. I actually want to make a horror movie called The Traffic and set it on Staten Island. It can star my grandpa, who flees every event two hours early in fear of spending one extra minute in traffic, and he's 95. What is he even racing home to? Also, by the way, should he even be driving? Maybe that's why most people never move off Staten Island. They're terrified of hitting traffic on the way out. Plus, let's face it, the bridge to Brooklyn cost $19. But I was desperate to see other places and have experiences that were decidedly not Staten Island. I remember when I was 17, my swim coach Jimbo Cooney, another great name, was giving me a trophy at the end of the year award ceremony. And he said to the crowd, let's face it, folks, this kid's future is not in swimming and it's not in Staten Island. He's going places. Let's face it, it was a, not, a lot nicer than what he said about the next kid. This guy's a terrible swimmer and I'm actually surprised he showed up tonight. But he was right. Well, he was right about both of us. I was at least physically going places, and only many years later could I look back and appreciate how Staten Island informed the rest of my life. The truth is, I've always had a chip on my shoulder about my hometown, but it stems from a deep insecurity that I don't really belong anywhere. 
One of my favorite moments on Weekend Update was when fellow Staten Islander Pete Davidson came on and talked about how I'm beloved in our hometown and he's despised. Example, one reporter complimented my golf swing while another threatened to murder Pete. But even Pete would admit that's not entirely true. Pete seems way more authentically Staten Island than I do, which is probably fair, even though it's a little alienating for me. If I'm not really from my hometown, then where am I from? At the same time, I feel defensive about Staten Island because the people I knew growing up were great people. A lot of them were first and second generation immigrants from all over the world. For every Lou Tobacco and Tommy, Tommy Naps Napolitano, there was a Harini Rao and a Samir Murik Putla who worked really hard to become doctors, lawyers, teachers, shop owners, businessmen, and yes, sometimes suspiciously wealthy, quote unquote, garbage men. And that thing about Staten Island being super Italian? Well, a study on Italian communities in Pennsylvania found that people in those areas lived longer, had a much greater sense of family and belonging, and were generally happier and healthier. There is a deep psychological comfort in feeling like you're part of a large community which is probably why I'm still at SNL after 15 years. The Staten Islander in me just doesn't want to give up a good family. I still go back home at least once a month because it's part of me and I feel weirdly revitalized every time I visit. It's like Superman's fortress of solitude, only replaced the space crystals with a plate of linguine fra di diavolo. I've come to resent the negative depictions of Staten Island on TV because they've given my hometown a terrible reputation, which it only sort of deserves. Yes, until recently, Staten Island was home to the largest landfill in the entire world. And yes, as a result, miles of the island smelled like rotting garbage. And yes, my main cultural touchstone as a child was the Staten Island Mall. And yes, only a year ago, a mob boss was whacked outside his house for snitching to the cops. I would write more about this incident, but I wasn't raised to be a rat. And yes, the local St. Patrick's Day parade is the only parade in New York that still bans gays from marching. But there are also like 170 parks. That's so many parks, guys. And George R. R. Martin said he based King's Landing on his view of Staten Island from his home in New Jersey. That's pretty cool, right? He also incidentally based Cersei on a woman he met in the parking lot of our Costco. The reality is Staten Island is like 90% of the country. It's slow to change, but most of the people are fundamentally good people. They're just set in their ways. After all, it's an island. It has its own evolution. Even if the Galapagos Islands had three bridges to New Jersey, they would still have some freaky iguanas. So if you're like me, and you're not always sure how to feel about your hometown, remember what Method Man once said. I'm in between homes right now, but my last house was dope.